Today we're sitting here because although it is our summer, is what happens is we do get sometimes thunderstorms that happen in the afternoon. And so basically I look at the skies and I know it's going to rain. I'm really happy for my plants and that's why even today I decided Let's talk about the Peperomia. This is a watermelon plant and it's beautiful. I love it. And so this is what we're going to talk about. Look at the plant and also talk about propagation. My name is Alice and I'm the Red Soil Gardener. So this is a watermelon peperomia and I'm so sure you must be wondering why do they call it the watermelon? Now the thing is, is that I went out and I got watermelon and basically if you look at this, these beautiful oval leaves it has the same pattern as the watermelon and that is why it's called a watermelon peperomia. It's just amazing. Now the other thing about this peperomia, let's call it the watermelon plant, is it's flowering and the flowers are not as beautiful. I mean, they're not colorful, but look at this. They have these stalks going up and then these are the little seeds coming out, the pollen, and um, they're growing everywhere. And so when they do flower, you get all these stalks, which is actually the flower, sort of jutting out of this peperomia. Now, the other thing, what is so fascinating, what I find very fascinating about this plant, is look at the design. You know, once you do, your peperomia gets to this size, is that basically, it's like a little rosetta. It's just many, many little uh, beautiful leaves and it just makes it a bit more interesting. The way I would display it is actually have it next to another plant so it doesn't look so isolated and it, and it does have different textures and it just makes it more interesting and give praise to this beautiful watermelon plant. So now, if we look at this lovely plant, is we have to understand that it is a rainforest plant. And being a rainforest plant, it likes a well-drained soil. But when it does, you do get it in a home environment. When you do water, do not uh, drench it because it doesn't like water near its root, not that much, because you will get root rot. So always do your finger test two inches down and if it is dry, you water it, but just keep it moist. The other thing about this plant is that if you take the environment of the rainforest where you do get diffuse sunlight and a bit of semi-shade, this is the sort of environment that this plant likes. So if you do bring it her, uh, the plant home, don't put it next to the windowsill because it'll damage the leaves. If you give it too much sun, the, the pattern starts to fade. And if you give it too little sun, it turns green. So the whole thing is that diffuse light and keep it where you do get a sun, but keep it slightly shaded in a room, but enough light coming in and your plant will be happy. Now, the other thing about um, the watermelon plant is that um, it grows in clumps. And if I look in here and you see where the babies, baby leaves are coming from, they're coming from everywhere underneath here. So what it likes is to be root bound. It likes the compactness. So if you have a plant like this, don't automatically think, oh, I'm going to repot it uh, every summer or, or spring, is that it likes to have this sort of environment and you can sort of repot it once a year or once every two years, but it's not, um, don't dismantle it. And after a year you think of repotting because it just loves to be compact. Now the thing about the peperomia here is that it stores in, you know, it's very soft and fleshy, but this is where it stores the water in its uh, leaves. Now what happens is that if you do overwater it, 
because of the compactness here is once you over water you could get fungal infection and that can actually go down to the roots and then you'll get the browning of the leaves and the leaves will wilt and fall off but that is the result of overwatering. So again, emphasis, emphasis, moist and not drenched. Now the thing about the watermelon pepper Romeo, it is a slow growing plant, so do be patient with it. And in the end, you will get this beautiful rosetta looking, but it is a slow grower. And the other thing about it is that it doesn't like cold conditions so in winter you put it at your windowsill it doesn't like the cold so always have it where it is diffused light somewhere a bit shaded from the this you know the sun so you're not damaging the leaves and it will be happy so let me put this aside look how pretty it is next to that and let me show you the techniques i use so what i'm going to show you is that I did a water propagation and um, a soil propagation. So what I simply did is I went into the plant and looked for a nice healthy stem and I just snipped it like that. And then what I did is I took it and I just placed it in water like that. And with the result is that, look at the pro water propagation and I even have a little baby coming out of the side here. And that's, um, that's how I did my water propagation. So with this water propagation, what, I, what I'm going to do now, because as we talked earlier about the soil propagation, is that these roots, when you get them from a water propagation, they're not as strong as the ones you get in a soil propagation. But if I see that these little babies are coming out, I think we're ready to actually put it in soil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking this. Now this has um, got a bit of vermiculite in it. It's actually an organic soil. You can see how dark it is. It's got all the goodies in it. Is I'm going to just take this and make a hole here. I'm going to take my lovely watermelon plant and I'm just going to put it in here and cover it there. So that is a water propagation and then moving it into a soil propagation. Now what I did is using the same technique is I did a water propagation, then moved it into a soil propagation, is um, this was the one that I got my babies. And as we saw in that uh, propagation, is that with the rooting, we saw little baby leaves popping out from the side. And that's what you get, is this sort of look. So once the plant does start uh, growing, these little babies, as we saw in the water propagation, they sort of jut out from the side, from the stem. And there you go. This is um, a water propagation with a soil propagation. So now with the soil propagation, what I did is um, I just took a leaf as seen here and I just put it in a well-drained soil, moist, kept it moist. And again, I'm getting my babies here. They're all sprouting out and you can see them. Beautiful. So this is from just a simple soil propagation, taking your, your uh, leaf and just stick it in the soil and keep it moist, but not drenched and then wait for it to produce its babies. So what I'm going to do with these ones, which I've just put them in water earlier, is I'm going to actually do some of soil propagation and some with water propagation. And you see the thing is that if one leaf propagation, you could get that sort of plant. 
and although it is slow growing but by Christmas I'm sure I will get a more foliage so with each plant with each leaf you can make a plant for a family member for Christmas so now in order for you to increase your foliage as we've seen is that the babies are shooting from the center here now what happens is as the plant gets older, the leaves get bigger, as we've seen here at the bottom. I would actually go around here and just remove all these um, hanging um, leaves, like this one, and um, like this. So what happens is that as you remove these, you're giving space for these babies to actually take over because what happens is that as it gets older, it gets heavier and it flops. And in that way, you can increase your foliage. And if you can look here, because this plant was situated like this with the sun, is all these are my little babies coming up, my baby leaves. And whatever is down here is actually the old ones. And we now understand from, um, from the photo we displayed is all the babies come from the clump from the center and they sprout out. So that is how you could actually increase your foliage and also, you know, clean it up a bit because if you do have such a dense situation, you will get fungal, in fact, you know, whatever taking over. So occasionally just clean it up. And once you do clean it up, get your babies, these leaves, and just put them in water put them in water and you can start your propagation for Christmas for your family so all these I will follow you follow me in Instagram I'm gonna make babies and this is going to be my Christmas present for my family so thank you so much for joining me on this channel and thank you and um, subscribe to the channel invite people and also give us a thumbs up and also don't forget to press that notification bell so that any time we do have episodes and we do upload our videos uh, every Tuesday evening, Kenyan time, and you'll be notified. So have a happy day and do grow a lot of them. It is so simple and give it away as presents for Christmas. So have a nice day. Bye bye.